Take two. So I've already started this and I really kind of screwed up big time while I was talking. I started stuttering over my own words. So here we are again talking about an extremely goofy movie. Uh, the title does not mislead you. It is an extremely goofy movie. So directed by Douglas McCarthy and Ian Harwell. Uh, this is a direct-to-video sequel to the original Goofy movie. It's an animated sports family film that stars returning cast members Jason Marsden as Max Goof, Bill Farmer as Goofy, Rob Paulson as Pete Jr., Jim Cummings as Pete, and Polly Shore as Bobby Zimarewski. Some additions to the cast are Jeff Bennett as Bradley Uppercross III. He also voices the I've been smoking for 30 years unemployment office lady who I couldn't find a name for, but that is the best way to describe her. One of those, I've got a raspy voice kind of people. So, some other additions. We've got Babe New Newworth. I butchered that. I'm so sorry. As Sylvia Marple Br and Brad freaking Garrett as Tank, who we saw earlier this week in Tangled. Um, again, I'm a sucker for Brad Garrett, and I can never remember what he's in unless you're talking to me about Everybody Loves Raymond, Single Parents, or Till Death. So, moving right along, has a 63% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is higher than the original. Um, yeah, that's just. Um, I, I think that both movies are quite good. Um, but I will say this one's slightly better. And since it's a direct-to-video sequel, there is no budget or box office earnings made available on IMBD. IMDB, I keep saying it wrong. Uh, it's IMDB, uh, or Wikipedia. So, that's of course, because it's direct-to-video, you're not gonna find that. Uh, you'll find that you're still buying it in stores, so the profit keeps going up and up, and Disney's pockets keep getting filled. So, like I said, this movie lives up to the original, and it's honestly, it's just as good as the original compared to other direct-to-video sequels of its time, like your Return of Jafar's or King of Thieves or Bell's Enchanted Christmas, kind of stuff like that. Um, not exactly of this movie's time, but it's in the same vein. Uh, the voice acting is great. Once again, Polly Shore, he's just wonderful. I love Bobby Zimarewski. Uh, he's so funny and just being your typical college stoner. He also tries to get with this French-speaking spoken word poem girl, uh, but eventually loses out to Pete Jr. The story here is simple. Max is off to college and Goofy loses his job. And after realizing, after speaking with our aforementioned, I've been smoking for 30 years, unemployment agent, uh, he decides to go back to college and get a degree, since you can't really get a job these days without one. Uh, obviously, this sets up Ma this upsets Max to, well, the Max. And, uh... So Max and Co. are competing in the X Games to beat Bradley Uppercrust III and his team slash frat house. Uh, and it, yes, it is a frat house. Um, we don't see any frat parties too in-depth, but there is one, I believe. Although, they're dogs, so I guess you could say doghouse. Apparently, this review is filled with jokes. I'm sorry. Uh... I kind of steered away from all the joking around uh, because it made me look like a straight clown on Instagram. But I'm just kind of reading what I wrote and I'm quite enjoying some of the stupid things I've said in the past. And I apologize to everyone for having to hear them out loud. Um, so anyway, Goofy gets recruited by Upper Crust and is used as leverage against Max. The two bicker about Max wants to cut the umbilical cord, but Goofy wants to be with Max constantly. This is like helicopter mom to the Max, only it's Goofy. So it's a, a helicopter dad slash dog. Um, this, of course, begs the question of where is Max's mother? We see Goofy go on a date with Sylvia, so we know he's not cheating on his wife. Unless Goofy is actually a closet adulterer. 
That'd be a horrifying plot twist to find out that Goofy's cheating on his wife with some college babe that he met. Um, don't, again, don't do stuff like that. That's horrible. Anyway, the music is great. Lots of re uh, renditions of 70s disco music. Uh, so that's always interesting. But I do want to go back to my boy Bobby Zimarewski real quick. He gets super meta towards the end. Where he, he goes, bro, did you ever wonder why we're always, like, wearing gloves? Because, yes, I have wondered that. Why are they wearing gloves? What's the purpose? Is it because back in the 30s or 20s or whenever Disney was founded, they could only draw the really fat hands that I can draw now because I'm a terrible artist? I don't know. He also mentions that Goofy will be, Goofy being at uh, college, with them will severely mess with their nightly activities and like bobby we all saw the last movie bro just go eat your cheese we know you do it again bobby is clearly a pothead but because this movie is rated pg he's shown to be addicted to cheese it's okay bobby we accept you anyway go smoke your cheese i mean eat your eat your weed i mean anyway as I've said, this is just as good as the last, but suffers from being a tad too short, like uh, like the last movie. Um, it goes by really fast, which is fine from a pacing standpoint, at least for this one. Um, since it picks a speed, it goes with it. But for me, I wanted a little more of Pete Jr. and Poem Girl and maybe more of Goofy and Sylvia. Also, what happened to Roxanne? That was another thing I kind of wondered. Where is she? Did she go to, like, the Disney version of Yale? And these guys went to the Disney version of, say, like, Brown University? Did she go to Harvard and they went to... I, I, I don't know. She just kind of ups and vanishes. Uh, and they were definitely in a relationship at the end of the first movie. Which, again, I guess high school relationships don't always last. Uh, anyway, before we get too depressed, this movie is another 9 out of 10. Uh, and still, seriously, go check out these two movies if you haven't. I don't ever remember... Oh, we didn't own an Extremely Goofy movie. I only watched it a handful of times when I could get a VHS out of the library. For those of you who don't know what a VHS is, it was this little black box. Kind of looked like... Looked like this. Uh, you'd put it in, and then you'd have to physically rewind it with uh, with a screwdriver or put it in a DV uh, VHS rewinder. Um, so, maybe wondering why I keep a VHS copy of Shrek and Harry Potter and Star Wars? Why don't you? That's my question. Uh, but if you haven't seen it, get out of the rock that you're living under. We're in quarantine. It's on Disney+. Plus. Get off your lazy booty and uh, go watch it. Definitely highly recommend both of these movies. So, that is three out of the four Disney movies I've already covered uh, on Instagram. I will eventually talk about Kronk's New Groove, uh, but I really want to rewatch it. I don't remember too much from it, and um, I this was like weeks and weeks ago that I covered it or actually months by now. So I want to rewatch it. I don't know if I was too fair on the movie, but who knows? I could have just been having a bad day or it really is as not as good as I put. So until then, until Big Hero 6, as you guys requested, until Aladdin, I'm Luke and I will see you guys later.